Welcome to another episode of our journey where we explore our revelations that the Lord Jesus has given us on this journey to understand and to overcome uh, our challenges in life. So last time we discussed about the angel who goes before our way and we stopped at uh, Exodus 23.23. So let's start from there. For my angel will go before you and bring you into the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hevites and the Jebusites and I will cut them off. I read this. Exodus 23, 23. I asked the Lord, see, your chosen people, the angel, takes them before these Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, Canaanites, Hevites, the Jebusites. He says, I will cut them off. So what's the significance of what they physically face, whom they physically face, and what's the significance of that in our natural, in our uh, spiritual sense, right? Of course, that I, I would reiterate what happened naturally to the Israelites during the Exodus is equally applicable to us as children of the Lord in our spiritual sense. Right? So, when the the Israelites went through and confronted these people, how would we compare these confrontations in our modern day spiritual battles? And I told you before, Lord will not supernaturally shift us from one place to the other. Neither He would shift us or make our challenges disappear and go away, just like we sing in most of the worldly songs. He will not do that. He would enable us to confront these challenges with His angels, in our sense, with the strength of the Holy Spirit, with the strength of the Word of our Lord Jesus. So I would like to take one uh, element out of these tribes that the Israelites uh, face. And in, the, in, in, in this journey, they bring you into the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites. So let's talk about the Hittites a little bit. So who are the Hittites? Okay, it's a certain uh, tribe in Israel, uh, maybe uh, uh, inhabitants of the land on the journey. And when they came to the land of Hittites, who fought against them? Is the angel of the Lord who fought against them and cut them off utterly. But still, the Israelites had to go through the Hittite territory. So if you look at the the meaning of Hittite tribe, what they were good at, what they were doing, and what was a certain spirit that worked heavily on Hittites, that operates on the people of Hittites, is the spirit of fear. The spirit of fear. In the spiritual realm, that is how the tribe of Hittites applies in our lives. So the spirit of fear, which engulfs or which emanates from this tribe of Hittite is the fear of men instead of God. So anybody who has the, the spirit of the Hittite, I would say the Hittite spirit, is afraid of the things of the world rather than relying on the sovereignty of our Lord, rather than depending on the, the supernatural power of our Holy Spirit of our Lord Jesus. They go after the the human solution, the human uh, uh, way of thinking and way of doing things. They are afraid. Let me take an example. You go to the hospital of a terrible pain and the doctors do a scan and the scan result comes out and it's not a good result. And the scan result says you have, okay, we suspect the impression is this and this. And they give you the scan result on that day. The first thing which enters your head, enters your mind, is the head tight spirit. Being afraid of what is written on that black and white paper. The fear engulfs you then and there. And that grips you, that tears you apart. That infiltrates each and every organ and blood vessel in your life. And you continue to think about it over and over again. 
So this is the confrontation, a certain confrontation, which the Israelites face naturally, which we face spiritually and naturally even right now. So if we battle this, the spiritual battle of casting away the Hittite spirit from our mind, the natural automatically takes place and manifests in our lives. The one whom I'm talking to you have gone through that as well. I'm talking my heart out of how I battle the Hittite spirit. So let's see, when did the Hittite spirit first come into this world, into the spiritual realm? That is as early as Genesis 3.10. So he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. There you go. The Lord God had this habit of in the cool of the day coming to Adam to talk to him, have a chat with him. What a privilege, what a beautiful encounter that would have been. But after Adam and Eve did what was forbidden for them to do, when the Lord God came, Adam said, I was afraid. This is the very first time the Bible talks about the word fear. Very first time. And the mention of, in the Garden of Eden, the mention of the fear, in other words, the Hittite spirit was released with the fallen man. The men became fearful of things, as Adam was fearful. He was never in his vocabulary to talk about fear. They were not even ashamed of each other when they were naked in the garden of Eden. But suddenly, they are afraid right now. That's the very first time. Then later on, Jesus keeps on talking about us, about the word fear. Say, do not be afraid, do not be afraid. Fear is mentioned 365 times in the Bible. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. It's mentioned 365 times. That means for 365 days of the challenges each day that we face, the Lord says, reminds us over and over again, do not be afraid. But we are very fearful of the things that we see on a piece of paper. It could be a medical report, it could be a legal prosecution, it could be anything, even a letter from one of your friends or even from your bosses or anything it could be, which makes your heart grip and fall and sink and gripped with the word fear. So it's very important, Amava, to understand the origin and the root of our fear. It's very difficult for us to understand. Now, when I started reading and I had my difficulty when I was going through my tribulation, uh, we, I was doing more of a plaster work, a patchwork, in order to avoid fear more of a reactive action than a proactive action to overcome or to eliminate the root of the fear. If you backtrace it and understand where the root of the fear is, it's very easy to attack it at the root itself so the growth of the rest of the fear is gone. So let's just imagine what happens when you get a bad medical report. The doctor gives you the medical report today. What happens? He asks you to come in a year, uh, in, in uh, seven days, or it could be even two weeks, to talk to him about what can be done about it and how to interpret the medical report. So during this interim period, imagine how much of fear grips you every passing second in your life. Every passing second in your life. You go home, think about it. You drive, think about it. You eat and your food does not taste your pleasant to your mouth. And your countenance is completely off. And you are not the bright star that you used to be. There is no aura of happiness in you. Because the fear keeps on gripping. Don't know what will the doctor say the next week. What would that other report would say? What would, uh, what would be my next move and all that? The fear keeps on gripping you. So when that fear grips you, what should we do? As the word says in Exodus 23, the Lord has already sent his angel before us. Please remember, before the Hittites, the Lord has gone and cut them off. This word 
has been printed more than 2000 years ago or beyond that the report that you get from the doctor is printed on the day that you got it which is the ink hasn't even dried off which report do you remember, uh, do you accept the report of the holy spirit which the holy spirit has given us saying given us the promise that i will go before you and utterly cut them away or the report that which the doctor gave choice is yours if you go on the report the physical report of the world the fear of the hittite spirit will cripple you even to death some people commit suicide they cannot handle that stress some people go into drugs because they want to avoid a certain lacuna a vacuum in their lives that they want to forget that pain and the fear some people party all night long and 24/7 in their lives they want to do something and to fill their minds and bodies with something in order to avoid a certain fear but they cannot avoid it so they go to bed they close their eyes that fear grips you okay so it's worldly sense is not possible to overcome that fear with the patchwork that we do in the world the solutions which the world provides cannot help us to overcome and utterly destroy that fear only the word of the lord so if you believe in the word of the lord in exodus 23 23 and exodus 23 24 there the lord says i will cut them off completely and you shall not bow down to their gods who are these gods gods who rule over those fears now you can see i mean no disrespect but many religions out in the world many devotees are afraid of their gods and even sometimes even christians we think we did something wrong and now we are afraid of our god that he will punish us some even voluntarily lash themselves and some even tear off their clothes thinking lord i did wrong no our lord does not punish us like that as long as we stick to the word that he has given so in this i want to explain i want to stress and emphasize to overcome the root of the fear is by the word of the lord believe when he says i will cut them off believe when the lord says i will cut them off believe when the lord says my angel will go before you and bring you to hittites yes i will get to that report yes you will, you will get that report you will have to but that report is not true the report in the physical sense could be true yes that's what the law the doctors have seen from a scan it could be even from any uh, blood test or something it could be true but it's not the truth there's a sharp distinction between what is true and what is the truth the truth is far more powerful than what is true the truth is that the lord himself will cut that fear off that is how you overcome the fear of the spirit of the hittites so the lord reminds us over and over again in order to overcome this the hittite spirit or the spirit of the fear by saying my angel will go before you so when it comes to me i personalize it to myself saying your angel and my angel will go before me in my life and bring me into the amorites and the hittites and you will cut them off and i this is my personal prayer to my lord so i would like to make that personal prayer with you as well along with you i know what many of you may have faced this kind of a challenge in life i'm speaking my heart out out of my own experience if you are going through or if you even have gone through even if your loved one is going through that let's just pray father lord we thank you for your word 
We thank you for the truth which is embedded in your word. Your truth is far more powerful than what is true in the world. And your truth of the word says that you will go before us and you are always with us. You will never leave us, nor forsake us. And you will cut off every element and modicum of fear in our lives. Because you are the one who confronts this fear. We face it, yes, but you help us to overcome it with your mighty power. Father, that I release this blessing of peace, shalom peace, of the truth of our Lord, and to build confidence in my brothers and sisters, just like you build confidence in me, to believe in this word, which is the truth, and to reap the benefit of this truth. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.